Alright, now, would you like to share with us your story? The enemies are dropping the actions. I hope the in-game noise... Come again. Okay, the in-game sound, I have uh, dropped it to 14. Sorry, uh, I dropped it down a little bit. Is it not? I hope it's not too soft. Okay, uh, go ahead, brother. So, tell me something. Why? I'm happy to chat. Uh, what, what, what would you like to chat about? I'm curious, like, where did your negative voice uh, come from in your head that you want to self sabotage because you feel like. May I assume subconsciously you feel like you don't deserve the best? Or good things I in your life? I don't know exactly. Like, that's one thing I'm still working on figuring out where exactly everything comes from. But okay. I definitely, uh, like, there's deep seated feelings of being a failure at, at the core of my uh, personal inner demon I issues, I guess. Personal inner demons. Okay. Where exactly it comes from, I'm not sure. But I certainly deal with like anxiety and depression. Um, yeah. Okay. Did so your family has always been encouraging, is it? I would say so. Yeah, I think they have been. Um, uh, they're Christian. Okay. And my like my mom works at church. Very 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 Christian family. All right. And I grew up uh, that way, but kind of grew out of that. Became a little bit of a naughty boy. Got into drugs. Okay. Uh, went to rehab. Okay. And I've tried to shape up my life uh, a bit. Life support on the way. Uh. Is there a reason why you got into drugs? Was was that just for fun or was it influenced by peers? I would say like uh, influenced by like looking for some way to not be anxious. As in you were already anxious as a kid, is it? I like uh, started feeling anxiety when I was 18 actually. D during well. your high school days? Oh, college. Right at the very, very end. Like, I remember the exact moment of feeling, like, uh, anxiety for the first time. I was, like, hosting a talent show at my high school uh -huh. uh, senior year. Okay. And, like, I did that for years before. That was kind of something that I did fairly normally. Okay. But for whatever reason, uh, yeah, that time I just remember super, uh, you suddenly super, felt super anxious. Mm -mm -mm. Continue. I don't know why, though. <laughs> Did, are you saying are you saying this particular event is the is a prominent event that happened in your life that was which is for which was the first time you felt abnormally anxious? Yeah, that kind of hyper social anxiety. Were you made fun of in school before by other kids? I think a little bit of both. Like I think I made fun of kids, and kids made fun of me. Uh, right. like, I think I felt both sides of that. Okay. Pretty. I would say on a fairly normal amount as a kid. Like I don't think I was abnormally picked on. Right. You're uh, neutral. Or they, I, you pick yeah. on each other. Yeah. I was, certainly was a dick to some kids, uh, but I was also picked on too. Right. So. Right. Okay. Like a. Okay, not as serious as the, you know, the Netflix original series, uh, 13 Reasons Why, not that serious, right? Yeah, not like quite the kid, like that, no. uh, Yeah, the photographer. Especially in, like, high school. I went to, like, a weird-ass high school, a nerd high school, kind of. And uh, so, yeah, that, that wasn't an issue there. It's a weird-ass high school. Could, could you define that, please? It was, like, a charter school. That okay. just kind of did have, had its own this rules, kind of. Um, uh -huh. So, like, uh, uh, for instance, like American colleges will do J term, where it's like a, a bunch of elective courses for one month. Okay. Uh, 
my my high school would do that. We would just take crazy classes. Like I had golf uh, golf course making, where we made a golf course in the shape of a human mm -hmm. cell in the back of one, and balloon animal making, and weird shit like that. Okay. A little strange school. Okay. So, which part of the strange... Uh, strange... Rule do you think that... Shit! I didn't have enough time to put in my relic. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oops. I'll do it. I'll do it the next round. You continue. So, answer me this question. Which part of your high school experience, right? The rules in school was unconventionally strange to you. You just mentioned that, right? If I'm trying to uh, like um, reinterpret it. So like uh at least compared to a lot of other American schools, they were pretty uh, focused on getting good grades. Uh, uh -huh. That was a big thing. We were like the best school in the state when it came to testing and stuff like that and just operated very differently than most schools. Okay. Required a lot more, but it was still like a public school. Okay. But they just once it filled up, you just couldn't get in. It doesn't cost any money or anything like that. Right, so you gotta Okay, okay. You gotta be like the top student to get into good schools. Not even that, like I'm pretty dumb. I think. <laughs> okay. So you felt that you felt left out in some way? Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just trying to figure out so. where you like, got your negative voice. Yeah. I don't I'm not exactly sure. I think uh, if anything, it, it's from having like a good family. Like, uh, or like not living up to that good family or my, uh, brothers and sisters. Like, maybe that's something, but I honestly don't know. This is a good acknowledgement, though. Do you feel that that might be a part of your, you know, the feeling of unworthiness? Oh, yeah, Because definitely. you're not good enough to definitely. receive your parents' uh, healthy, good love. Healthy love? It's like they've given me so much and I just kind of want to be an idiot and be, be naughty and uh, will never be good enough uh, to live up to that, what, what they've given me sort of thing. I think that's probably where it comes from, but I'm not exactly sure. Okay, let me ask you another question. I hope, you know what, at the end of the day of this conversation, right, I, although I am not a certified coach or whatsoever, I'm just your fellow fellow Warframe gamer, okay? Friend, gamer friend. I want to try to help you discover, right? If you believe in my stories, which I own self, uh, discover my own root of problem, mental case, yeah? Uh, I'm down, I'm down. Yeah, I am passionate about this because in fact, this is what I strive for in this life, you know? Because it's, a, it's surprisingly common that adults do not realize, right? The way that they are will mostly influence their mindset, right? As they grow up, as to become a, a developed adults. Will mostly influence and form during uh, development years. So next question I would like to impose is, this is not my words, yeah? These words are from actual psychiatrists and psychologists. I'm just uh, re resharing it to uh, uh, give you guys, give everybody a context and give you a context. May I know what expectation did you think that your parents expect you to, 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 to achieve, to reach? Um, so like uh, they would want me to play an instrument. And I okay. would quit that. Do Boy Scouts. I right. quit that. Uh, go to college, and I got uh, addicted to drugs and went to rehab in like, right. the last semester of my fourth year. Okay. Uh, I did go like uh, typically. I go back and finish these things eventually. And it's like, it took me seven years to graduate with a bachelor's degree. That should have been four, Dude, but I, you have a I freaking eventually bachelor's did it. Degree? 
Yeah, it just took me a little longer than all of my, uh, all this, like my friends my age. You know what I mean? So what? But exactly, yeah. I'm over. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I just kind of have to work I, through mm. those inner feelings. Right. It's not natural for me to be okay with that, but it takes a little time, and I can be okay with that. Okay. At any point of time, did your parents ever tell you, right? Uh, Gimme. Let's say your real name is Gimmer, okay? Which is not, yeah? Uh, Gimmer, son. No problem. Uh, you know what I want for you? Uh, imagine I'm your parents or your mother. What I want for you is just for you to discover what you want in this life and be happy with it. The Have they the encouraged you like this? Not really, no. Honestly. Okay, but in what sense do you find them? How, in, in this case, why would you think that they are good parents? Um, because they, they for do you support everything? me. Um, mm. but I guess, uh, yeah, just differently than I would hope sometimes. Okay. They support you in terms of things that you do not wish, you do not want. But things that you want, they refuse to support you, is it? Did they so like, refuse for, to support Here's one you? instance mm. of me being like, what the fuck about my parents? Uh, okay. Even though they're trying to support me. Like, I don't uh, agree with the same sort of religion they do. I'm not like a... Devout Christian? Uh, yeah. You're and actually they are uh, very, very, devout satanic. I'm just kidding. They, they just are kidding. like devout, uh, very middle American farmer sort of Christianity. Me... Uh, are you trying to... Use a better word to define rednecks. <laughs> I'm sorry to use this word, yeah, because I'm trying to no, understand. No, that's fine. Uh, they're not exactly rednecks. They're they're not like uh, hicks. Okay. But uh, they would they would agree with what hicks agree with religion. Okay, what's like. hicks again? I'm, I don't know what that, that means. A redneck, redneck, like you're right, saying. Right, right, okay. Yeah, like they would they would go to the same church as redneck, but they really aren't. Uh, like they, I guess, don't act similarly. Just right. Because. They're from Minnesota and like live in the city. So pretty progressive. They wouldn't stop you of wanting to do something different. Is it? Yeah, or they they're they are they are fine with me doing what I want, but like what's important to them, uh like my dad has grabbed me uh and pushed me up into a corner and been like but do you believe in God? Do you believe in God? Like, that's the, the only thing that actually physically? matters to him. Okay, go ahead. And, and that kind of shit pissed me off. It's like, he like literally didn't believe in God. You okay, know what I'm I mean? Sorry. Like, that's, that's messed up to me. Don't, don't mind if I intercept you free, from time free. to time, okay? Because I want to get the whole context before I... Uh, to understand. Are you saying your dad physically push, literally, physically push you to a corner and ask you this question, do you believe in God? Yeah, yeah. That's a cult, man. Yeah, it was years ago, like when I was living in their house, still much younger, uh, but like I was an adult. Uh, but like, yeah, stuff like that, just was it? like, so you care about me, but is that more important to you than I am or... Would that change how you feel about me if I didn't? I that's, that's fucked up. And so it's like they support me fully, I think, in like anything I want to do, but yeah. When, Under when shit hits the fan and everyone's mad, real feelings come out. Describe a situation that defines your statement shit hits the fan. So in that instance, I was uh, doing drugs pretty hardcore. Okay. Well, uh, can you could you give a little bit of a more context to the recreational choice of medication yeah, you were consuming? Yeah. I like uh, I smoke weed and cigarettes right now, but at that mm -hmm. moment I was kind of just like a garbage pail and down to do whatever, but was mainly doing like pain pills. Oh, uh, oxycodone, is it? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, that's hot call like, shit, bro. I tried stronger stuff, but not regularly. You know what I mean? I was just like, I would be down for whatever a friend right. had, or but regularly it was like smoking weed and doing pain pills. And pain pill is pain pills got is... me into trouble, basically. Yeah. Uh, world's most addictive drug is opiate heroin re related. Always. Okay, go ahead. So, you uh, are you? Yeah, I think it was just like a, it wasn't even an argument. I was just trying to get out of the house, get away from them, go do drugs, and uh, mm -hmm. it was like just like an argument, trying to. My, they're like asking me where I wanted to go, and I was being a rebellious young person. Uh, and yeah, I think my dad at that moment was just like, I don't give a fuck what you do. Uh, but this is the most important thing to me. And voice that, and was, pissed me off in that moment. <laughs> so, uh, okay, you, uh, you you were over, so you were focusing on taking your drugs, and then they got fed up with you, is it? Is that the yeah, juice? Yeah, I think that's totally valid. Totally valid. Right, okay. Then, uh, I mean, I know... How old, how, how young were you back then? It was probably like 18, 19, something like that. And I'm, I'm 35 now. This is a while ago. Okay, so when shit hits the fan, the, 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 the situation where your father literally pushed you to a corner and yelled at you saying, do you believe in God happened? Is it? Yeah, yep. yep. Right. Were you traumatized by this event since it's like so many years ago and you still remember it? Does this incident seem traumatic to you in any way? I don't know about traumatic, but it definitely affected me. Okay. In what sense? I think it was just kind of like, uh, at that moment, I, I felt, oh shit, I know where your priorities uh, lie, I guess. Oh, as in your parents' priority, is it? Yeah, I felt like my dad's priorities were more like, okay, I don't know what the hell's gonna happen to you, but hopefully at least you believe in God. Okay, my next question will be a simple one. Are your parents in any way educated? Like, what is their, what is their education level? My dad is super smart, and my mom, they both have a bachelor's. I think my mom has like a business degree. My huh. dad is like, uh, some like triple major. Uh, like physics, math of some sort, and computer programming, and like uh, now it does like consulting for some health insurance company. Uh, what? Like, uh, it, yeah. The, 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 oh my gosh! It really came to me as a surprise, you know. If your father is someone who reasons with logic and facts. How can he be so hardcore with religion? Yeah, it's strange to me. Wow, it really baffles me, you know? The relic has been cracked open. I mean, if you were to, let's say, describe my parents, it would not be a surprise to anybody. My parents are both uh, irrational, uneducated, uh, but I wouldn't blame fully because on their uneducation, no background, okay? Because I've uh, witnessed good parents without good ed educational background and still be awesome parents, alright? But uh, I guess education really does not define how to be good parents, huh? I don't think so, not necessarily. I think it definitely helps. It definitely can help. Okay, well, okay, let's fuck education aside. Because clearly, 
in uh, to compare our just our both our circumstances clearly education doesn't do shit uh, uh, that's, that makes anyone I'm, become a good parent like right? one thing too like uh, or even I a am, good person in general i'm the least educated the least uh i'm certainly the bottom kid of four and i think even though like that I understand that my parents love me. There is some of that too. Like I am always the worst kid. The the why? Least, just because the, you were a drug uh, addict? Uh, like and my brothers and sisters are great. Wait, being addicted to a drug doesn't make you a bad person, though. No, 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 no. I think I'm just more like I would rather sit on my ass and smoke weed than strive to do. That uh, you were much a teenager. Back then when you were a teenager, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. And may I assume you took it because you felt like you cannot leave a similar... You cannot reach the similar expectation as to your overachieved parents who have triple degrees, triple major, and just like your elder brothers and sisters. So I was like, I don't know, like I think I did drugs because of anxiety, and that was, it was definitely social anxiety. Like, social anxiety, I felt okay. weird uh, hanging out with friends for whatever reason once I turned 18. And so I started doing drugs. Right. You had, okay, wow, wow, brother, I, you don't mind me pro asking question, right? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Wow! Your... Your story is way more intriguing than I... than I expected, you know? I have so many it, questions. I don't think it is. I think there's a lot of people like me uh, in the US. Like, right. I'm not very uh, interesting. Born like... Very middle America, like uh, middle class, or I would, I would... Maybe some people would say upper middle class. Uh, okay. Probably depends on where you're from. Okay, if your parents are able to support you under college, right? I would say you're pretty mid upper middle. Yeah, no, yeah. see, I, yeah, I get you definitely. Mm -mm -mm. We had to do 50 50, where like I pay for part and then they would pay for half if I. Uh, oh, yeah, she paid for your own college? Uh, it took me forever, but yeah, I paid like a hundred grand in stupid loans. Bruh! 100 grand? To just go and study a degree? I made a poor decision and went to a private school where like a friend was going. Was it even a reputable school? It was decent, but certainly not worth the money. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, like every other... I have uh, two sisters and a brother. They all went to state schools. Uh, some of them now have, like, my sister has a master's degree. They're all doing much better off than me. Okay. How... I'm fine with that. It's more like they're, they, they spend a lot less money and are doing... You know what I mean? They are doing just fine without having to spend a bunch of money on a degree. Yeah, I believe Go to state that... school. Mm. How much older were your siblings? I have an older brother and then two younger sisters, and we're all three years apart. Everybody is three years apart. Okay. Yep. Wow, that means we are in, you're in a pretty similar era. Let me tell you something, okay? What I uh, noticed, right? In a dynamic of a family where there's uh, multiple children, given birth by parents, right? There will always be one odd children out. You know what I mean? One black sheep. No, I mean black sheep is... Uh, it's not... I, I wouldn't even say it's... It's not even black sheep, bro. It's just, for some crazy reason, the odd one out. So basically, you are the middle child, right? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm one of the two middle ch children. I'm also the only one with red hair. We all would joke that... Uh, See? You are special! 
Yeah. I will call you but special. I wouldn't call you black shit. Black hair. It's such a strange phenomenon, don't you think? Uh, I I will be honest. I'm not an expert in uh, this sort of uh, phenomenon of why uh, when uh, two person when they decide to give birth, right? And there's always this there's always this phenomenon of uh, uh, one of the siblings or the offspring, right? Being uh, odd one out. I guarantee you, it happens in all family. Three children and above. There will always be one out, one out. As in, uh, not living the same lifestyle, uh, no, not conventional. At least, like you, 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 like like you and I. Yeah, that's definitely me uh, when it comes to lifestyle, for sure, in comparison to my siblings. <sighs> I am trying to think of the next question to ask because I have so many I just can't put it into words you know because I'm not familiar with uh, this sort of okay uh, one, one thing I would say yeah. like, uh, for, uh, when it comes to odd one out yeah I don't think I was ever the odd one out when it came to uh, I guess like hanging out with my family okay okay like uh, me and my sisters could hang out very easily that's awesome or me and my brother and the older sister could all okay. hang out, mm. and uh, the younger one was kind of left out. Or my other brother was left out, but oh, no. yeah, that uh, in that respect, I was never uh, the odd one out. Right. Do but you? lifestyle-wise, definitely, mm. I am uh, different than my siblings. To some level, as you mentioned before. Do you still feel that you're not worthy of your parents' love? Um, because you I can't live up to their feeling, expectation? But I try to tell myself uh, that that is a stupid kind of uh, inner monologue. So it's developed through your own observation, is it? Or did it? Or did someone actually insulted you or abuse you before, and tell you that you don't deserve the other? No. Did you? I don't. Uh -huh. I don't think so. Like not that I know of. Okay. So it's a self-observation, self-realization kind of uh, inner voice that you develop on your own. Yeah, that's what I think. Could be wrong, obviously. I'm not a therapist or anything. And I'm quite. not a therapist and so I'm just talking to you as a friend, you know? Yeah, like that's what I think. I think it is a inner monologue, an inner voice that is negative, that is wrong. And it's, I can say, yup, you're not correct, but it's tough to actually live that sometimes. Do you feel bad sometimes when your parents are extra nice to you? Oh yeah, yeah, like I'll, because sometimes it's like, They'll just want to hang out or do something nice, and I just want nothing to do with anyone because I'm depressed or feeling anxious. They just want to hang out and be nice, but I'm not feeling that. And honestly, they're okay with me not being okay with that, but it's just, you feel bad. I, it makes me kind of go into this, like, uh, circle of... Well, I feel bad, so I don't want to hang out with anyone, or I don't want to do anything, and it just kind of continually uh, keeps keeps a person. Um, oh, what's the word? Isolated. Alone. Yeah, isolated. Yeah, mm -mm. definitely. Mm. Easy to get into that kind of cycle. Wow. Just gotta pull myself out. <laughs> Brother, you have to understand something, which is the truth. Yeah. Your parents are nice to you until today, since you are a child, even when you are at your worst. And is this accurate? Besides the literally shoving you to a corner and, and telling you, do you believe in God? Yeah, I think no, that's I think quite for traumatic part, for a child though. Yeah. So, wait, I lost my line of thought. Hold on, give me one sec, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to ask you a question relating to what I just said. 
Guten Abend, Mi. No, no problem. I was gonna ask you... Shit! It will come back to me, okay? Just give me a moment. Uh, Anonymous have a nice statement for you in chat, by the way. Thank you, Anonymous. Did you catch that? Oh, that is very nice. Yeah. Yeah, like I, I, uh, I would say I've gotten over most of the uh, depression-related symptoms of like that sort of inner monologue, but like anxiety is something that I definitely still have issues with. Yep. Uh, but like I just uh, quit a job where it was selling uh, gold and silver to yeah, you told me angry dudes, time so I got over. Yeah, I like a lot of the social anxiety You did stuff. the right thing by quitting it, and even your family supported. Remember? Yeah, yeah. No, my family definitely uh, has been great through all that crap, too. Brother, you need... In order to silence your... This misperception of... You are not living up to the expectation of your loved ones, right? That show you unconditional love, no matter what you do and no matter who you are. You need to be... I know you are a very down-to-earth person based on some things you share with me, like doing the right thing, by like quitting the job, not taking advantage of your clients, you know? You need to talk to your parents, okay? And you need to hear it from them personally. This is just a suggestion, of course. I'm not sure whether would it ultimately help, but this is... Because from what you told me is they never told you before, son, as long as you are happy, you are living up to my expectation. You need to hear it from them. Just that they didn't say it before, you see. So I think... Somehow they are over-caring and over-love, right? Makes you feel... Not worthy because... You are... Lo you are looking at your... Official guardian, protector in your life as example of how to become decent human beings. And these decent human beings are mostly defined by job, the amount of money you earn. I think it's fucking bullshit, yeah? A decent human being should be someone that leads by good morals. And you have live up to it. And you see, even you told me yourself that your family was proud of you when you quit your job because you did the right thing. So, here comes my suggestion. Okay. You need to somehow get into a conversation, right? With your parents. And hear it from them personally. And ask them clearly. What did they expect you to become? What is the expectation of you? Just ask them this question and hear what they have to say. And I guarantee you, it's what I just said. Based on what you told me so far. Okay, so here's the wrinkle I'm going to throw at you. Okay. My parents and I had that conversation. But then? my problem... I, and they... Uh, they answer adequately, in my opinion. My, my issue seems to be internalizing that. And, what? like, uh, getting to truly... Like, I believe it when they say it. But uh, I guess from moment to moment, it's hard to feel that way, actually. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly if I'm describing that well. Okay, are you saying that you already had that conversation, but somehow you don't believe it? Hold out as long as you can. You still yeah. feel it's bad. It's the same thing like, you know how uh, even though I feel, let's like, say, scared uh, or anxious in a situation when uh -huh. I shouldn't? I just, mm -hmm. you just do. <laughs> like that, kind of. Repeat what you just said again, please. Like, uh, let's say you're feeling anxious to go talk to someone, even though it's a good friend, and you know you shouldn't feel anxious. Uh-huh. But you just still do. It's that, it's that same sort of thing. You feel anxious talking to a friend, but you still go and talk to the friend. Is that what you mean? I guess, like, uh, even though my parents would tell me that I am uh, not a failure, 
uh -huh. deep down I still feel like a failure, and I believe them when they say that they don't think I'm a failure. Okay. It just doesn't. I don't internalize that. Uh, you don't believe it. Yeah, it's, I, I don't believe it myself. Your subconscious don't believe it. Like, I believe that they believe it, but deep down, I haven't been able to internalize that feeling yet. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, like, I, me and my parents got deep down, like, when I was going into rehab, like, I didn't get into trouble. I just mm. ended up being like, holy shit, my life sucks. Hey, uh, I going to rehab things. is not a bad thing, you know. In fact, it's a very courageous thing. It's just being stigmatized by fucking mainstream TV drama or, or, or mainstream oh, yeah. media that's deemed as a bad thing to be to go to a rehab before. In fact, in real life, going to a rehab, right, is a very courageous thing. Like seeking help with yeah. a therapist, you know, wanting to be better, acknowledging your flaws. Fuck mainstream media, man. I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes, you see, like earlier on, I use movies as an example, right, to describe that it's actually not a good thing to watch too much movies and uh, internalize the, the the outcome of fantasy ending of movies to perceive it as oh, it will happen in real life, you know, or oh, somebody else's happy ending can be mine. In real life, it's not. So with the same logic. And reasoning, right? Oh, what was I gonna say again? <laughs> Shit, I lost my line of thought. Sorry, yeah. So I, this is the problem with me as a previous addict myself. I've never been to rehab. I just quit on my own. It's fucking amazing, man. Do you know what was my uh, solution without going to uh, rehab? It was true love, bro. The love I had at that time, right, was stronger than the drug. My, my choice of brand of drug in the past was uh, methamphetamine, MDMA. Not, not as hardcore as opiates, of course. You know what I'm saying? But still, uh, it was that my was crazy poison. For me personally. Come again? Okay, I think you, you were going to say MDMA doesn't work shit on you, right? No, the opposite. Like, uh, it, it, I just didn't really like uh, I didn't really like uppers of any kind, but I remember this constantly, uh, I guess like on New Year's Eve, my teeth being clenched lying on my buddy's couch. It was always too crazy for me. Oh, okay. Eh? Yeah. Oh, you actually did still feel the effect of MDMA then? Were you an opiate user already back then? Yeah, yeah, I just like was always into uh, more into things that brought you down as opposed to bringing you up. Right, right, right. I'm not, not really the light. into cocaine or anything like that or yep. that sort of, yeah. I'm gonna tell you one scientific fact, yeah. People like you and I who were hardcore addicts before or have, been, have uh, consumed recreational drugs for a long period of time, right? It will actually change the actual neuroplasticity, the shape, and damage our brain. Do you know that? Yeah, definitely feel those effects a little bit, that's yeah. for sure, sadly. The good news is, our brain can heal. If we do the right things to, uh, uh, to uh, so-called expedite the healing. Eating well, exercising, uh, you know, reading, you know, do the things, uh, self-awareness, meditate. We can get well. Our brain can heal. It, we will not be, we will not be permanently damaged. Okay, unless you're telling me that this particular drug is gonna eat, literally eat up your brain like a freaking. What kind of virus actually eat up uh, human brain? Uh, I don't think so. Although the neuroplasticity changed the, the size or shape of our brain actually literally will change due to long-term use of these uh, hardcore drugs, right? It can heal. Uh, the, the, the gist of me telling you this is because it's, I must say it's at least, right, 50% contribution of your guilt 
feeling bad and your depression. Because your brain is so used to getting high from those drugs that your brain can no longer produce its own oxytocin naturally or dopamine naturally. So your normal state, right, is usually depressed. You feel me? Yeah, definitely. As a long-term drug user, I think everybody, anyone who is a long-term drug user before can relate to this. I can definitely relate. So can I talk to you about a current issue that I had? Go and ahead. why I quit my job? Please, I think you were chatting me before, remember? Because you're trying to do the right thing? Was it no, the same? No, so like, uh, well that's certainly part of it, but I was, uh, I've been like, angry. Lately. Angry? And that's not something that's like, uh, has been too normal for me. Go ahead. I get mad at work, like at stupid things or things going wrong and just like unable to get unmad for like a few days. Okay. May I ask what sort of situation will usually get you mad? Is it just random smallest things? Yeah, the stupidest stuff. I, I, not always the stupidest stuff, but it could be the stupidest stuff. Like little, uh, just interpersonal uh, problems or not liking something. Yeah. I mean, I know that it's because you just hit, uh, not just, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry to use the word just. It's a really bad word to use when talking about serious stuff like this. Could it be because internally you really hate, hate your job? Oh you yeah, just, I you think just that was didn't... definitely part of it. Definitely. Because you knew for a long, for quite some time that your boss is someone who is immoral, do not care about other people's hu other human lives, and um, somehow doing sidelines illegally on at the expense of others. And you're angry about that. So I think a part of it too is just like... Uh not really working through emotions while doing a bunch of drugs and okay uh, i'm way more emotional now that i am not good uh, but like uh that yeah I, I can't i haven't figured out how to deal with anger very well basically okay well would you like to hear what i have to say about depression and anger yeah yeah please how i deal with it Personally, okay. Oftentimes, I think it's gonna be harder for a man, conventional man, especially an American me, uh, middle, higher middle class like yourself. All right, because I think your culture, especially your culture, teaches you that crying, being sad, being vulnerable is bad. Is a as a, like a weak weakness, right? Somehow, especially you were taught this like in uh, your 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 high school. Did, did, uh, did you hear my? Uh, yeah, no, I I agree. Like that certainly was something like I grew up with, but that's not as much of an issue I would say right now. Like, uh, yeah. Let me ask you this question: When was the last time you cried? I literally um, pour it recently. out. recently. I think like a couple days ago probably. I cry all the fucking time though, like super easily. At okay. dumb stuff. Like it could be commercial. Like okay. I, yeah, I, I uh, just, like just could randomly have emotions. <laughs> Good. Did this happen only recently after you quit your job? Like the... No, this has like been the, just the past like however many years. I don't know, like eight years since I quit doing drugs. Since you quit doing when, drugs, okay. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Good emotions, bad emotions, just very emotional. Okay. Okay. But uh, it's gonna be a sensitive question, okay? I do not mind and give a fuck if our this live stream is gonna get demonetized because we don't earn much through live streaming anyway. <laughs> fuck. Uh, like a few cents. So my question is, 
during your period of depressive episodes, right? At your worst, at your worst depressive episodes, were you suicidal? Yeah, yeah. There's definitely points where I felt like that, but uh, uh, not obviously not now. Okay, good. How do you feel after crying? Like really let yourself pour it out, man. The spores have almost completely saturated the atmosphere. Usually, how oh, do you feel? It does feel after? good. It does feel good, but mm. yeah, it's usually like if I'm, do it's not appropriate. <laughs> who says it's not appropriate? If you do it in the comfort in your private space, who, you know, or among people that care about you. Why would you? You see, ah. Uh, in this case, if you think that the best life medicine support. is to come with in t with terms with your actual emotions, that's the one of the best thing to do, right? For it's part of the process of healing. I'm not even speaking as a psychologist, okay? I'm speaking as a normal human being and not one human being to another human being, okay? Because you all experienced it before, you see? So, I'm telling you straight up, um, you cannot cry thinking that it's a bad thing, you know, or something bad you just did. It is not the truth. In fact, crying is a therapeutic and uh, it's extremely therapeutic and healing is nothing to be ashamed of I, see I think the only crying that I do though is that sort of therapeutic crying crying getting like uh, watching a video to make yourself cry or something that's like the only kind that I personally do if there's any consolation I still cry to 13 reasons why yeah same scene and cry for the same fucking reason and I watched that Netflix original series for the fifth time. It's your favorite. Uh, one of all my top favorite Netflix original series. Yeah, because I can. The love, man. Oh, have you watched it? No, I haven't watched it. I have seen some stuff about it. Oh, I'm, dude! I'm like uh, obsessed with reality TV. The thin reason why is way better than reality TV. <laughs> But I uh, like to encourage you to please watch it with someone that you for TV and that cares shows. about you and you care about them because this show can be quiet. Okay, if you do not cry a whole packet of tissue paper, right? I will buy you your next seventy-five percent off uh, Warframe Platinum. <laughs> Is that uh, triggering and moving? Hardcore. That's hardcore. Yeah, it's it's a freaking uh, M18, right? But in fact, I think it should be uh, rated as R21, you know. Life support has been replenished. But it's M18. I think that's the reason why they actually rate the show M18 because they're trying to address uh, real-time issues happening in schools, high schools in America. Yeah. So that's what the TV show, the target audience is basically teenagers, I, young adults, or yeah, teenagers. But you know what, even if you are a full grown adult already, that film will still make you, oh my fucking god, you know? It gets better into the season. Here's one problem I think that I have had that's Yo. been tough to overcome. Okay. I feel like my problems are very small in comparison to no. other people's. And so Who it, says? It's, it's hard for me to take my, my own issues seriously. I feel like that is uh, something that uh, also mentally I have issues with. You know what? Believe you and I, not just you and I can relate, everybody else in this chat or anyone else who deals with depression of sorts, uh, unworthy of love issue, right? 
all feels the same. I'm not trying to like uh, say it to demean how you feel or think, but oh no, I understand. You. We I internalize this. It's a very common trait to make you feel not so alone. Okay, brother, I'm better with this every fucking single day, man. As in, uh, I mean part of it. Not okay. Every fucking single day would be a bit over exaggerated, yeah. I better with it when I'm going through my depressive episode. Like my problem is big fat nothing compared to someone else's. You know what I'm saying? You, I am battling it myself. So you know, it's crazy how I'm. What I'm gonna tell you next, right? I may not be able to do it myself. Okay? As your fellow Warframe gamer friend. I'm telling you straight out right now, this internalization that your problem is not as huge as someone else's is a big misperception and it's not useful for you at all. Additional life it's not gonna help arrived. someone else as well. Think about it. And that's a fact. So what you're gonna fucking internalize it? If you were, okay, if let's say we can measure our issues, right? Internal issues with, let's say, true value, some kind of value. In fact, in fact, allow me to rephrase myself. There's no way to measure, right? Whose problem is bigger or smaller, okay? Because there's no, everybody's, if you talk about specifically this kind of uh, self-loading, Feeling of uh, low self worth issue, right? Oh my gosh, I got a lot. Gara Prime Chassis, don't you need that? Gara, I, I already have Gara, yeah. I'm gonna get this. Wait, is, what about, isn't there like a syndicate you need to rank it up though? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah! Shit! I'm yelling at 6 a.m., okay. Fuck! 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 You see, you remember my progress then better than me. Ah yeah. Next time, next time. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't worry, don't. Worry. Eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Arbiter's fucking hexes, man. But okay, anyway, coming back to your topic, don't worry. It's not important. Yeah, I mean the 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 the, the, the blueprint. Um, do not. There is no true value to compare whose problem is bigger or smaller. Okay. An issue is an issue, and everybody's issue is unique. Okay, let me ask you something. Sure. I guarantee, I already expect what your, what your answer is, alright? Everybody in the channel, you can answer this question as well, alright? Uh, do you think your problem is smaller than someone without four limbs? Or missing a limb or two limbs even. Do you think your problem is smaller than someone? Oh hell yeah. Hell yeah. In fact, let me tell you the truth, okay? Most disabled people. Most disabled people, okay. Let's not let's not talk about someone who has completely no uh, control of their body movement. For example, the no shitty disease I think anyone can suffer, right? Is the muscle deterioration like uh, Stephen Hawking and another sure. gentleman in America actually suffers from it, yeah? That would be the most... I don't think Stephen Hawking is even that depressed though. Because he was still able to uh, be smart and communicate and uh, fulfill his purpose in his life, you know? Anyway, my point is, disabled people, right, without a limb or two or three or four, right, are pretty fulfilled. Actually, yeah, except for this uh, one disease that I just spoken about, the, the mus muscular, test, test, uh, blah, blah. muscular disease that affects your bone and your muscular growth. Other than these diseases, this this particular disease, right, that completely immobilizes you, and you cannot do anything at all, not even uh, 
wiping your own ass or brushing your own teeth or even fucking breathe sometimes, yeah? Everybody else who is disabled without a limb or two or three or four limbs, right, are very happy people. Do you know that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. Like, yeah. I think, I think there is something to be said, like, if you have some sort of debilitating disease or affliction or something, it's harder to have, like, a starting good baseline in life. But you can certainly be just as happy or live just as bad or good for that matter of life. Exactly. Look at what Anonymous type in chat. I completely, 100%, 200% agree with you. The body is nothing without the mind. The, our body is nothing without a healthy mind. Yeah, read that again, man. So, brother, so I hope you meditate on uh, what we discuss today. Your problem is in fact bigger than any other disease. You gotta live with it every fucking single day because you are still young in my books, honestly. You're like what? Young, early, to early 30s, right? Just turned 35 on April Fool's Day. 35 on... wait. Are you saying that your birthday is actually on April Fool's Day? Or are you uh -huh. just... Yeah, no I, it is. I thought it's a joke, you know? Your birthday is actually on April Fool's Day? Yeah, it caused so much havoc. Like when I was little, <laughs> I pulled pranks on people. And then from then on, it just... Like my friends kidnapped me and put me in a trunk. Fuck, on my birthday. Bro. Okay, that's not good. At 3 in the morning. Uh, as what? like a prank, happy birthday type thing, but I was so pissed. But like uh, a lot of stuff like that would happen. Hey, I, I started it though. Young it's, life. it's too much, yeah. People and think my it's funny, would lock but me in my room. Why? I would get into trouble. <laughs> I would do naughty things to prank other people because it was my birthday and uh, yeah. Oh, the pranks are. I'm not gonna lie, right? Certain pranks are overboard in America. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I haven't ex I hope I, I never have to experience it, yeah. Uh, I never experienced any pranks from friends, right? That is, uh, okay, I, I've only suffered one prank that was so bad that I had my neck sprain for a couple of months. Because my, Ouch. some, yeah, do you know why? I was like this for a few months, okay? You can watch the stream in about eight, 8 seconds. Yeah. yeah, my neck was like this, yeah, for like a few months. I'll tell you what the prank is all about. Okay, coming back to the topic, before I tell you about the prank, you need to face the reality, right? Actual disabled people, okay, or people who are maybe starving in third world country, not trying to demean their suffering, yeah. Uh, hunger, uh, people living in Tumbo country are, of course, uh, going through this pandemic of don't have clean water, clean toilet to use, um, not enough food to eat, uh, a war is causing uh, them to not have uh, growth, you know. But guess what? They have help, they naturally get sympathy. You feel me, brother? So they are, in a way, better than us. They get oh God, help and yeah. sympathy straight away, man. People like us, like yourself, do you think we get sympathy straight away? You need a hold on of... Let's just say that... People who has never been through what we've been through in this life, right? Hardcore addict for a, period, a long period of time uh, Traumatized before as a kid because of stupid fucking pranks uh, Living in a very pressuring em uh, uh, family environment, right? Like ne you can't live up to the expectation and whatnot All these are contributing factors of your deteriorating mental health, you know? It should be acknowledged
I definitely agree with that. Like, and I think I've I've been working to acknowledge it, but I just have trouble like uh, really internalizing that. Fuck those. Like I can say it, and try to remember it, but mm. uh, like living it is the tough part. I find. When you were going through your uh, rehab, right? Did you go through the twelve steps program? Oh uh, yeah. Yep. Did you, well, did you go through the twelve step, twelve step program sincerely, or you just felt like you're going through, because it's the process? I did not go through it sincerely. No, I went into rehab and played nice, and I got I. They let me out with flying colors. Like most people uh, at the program that I was going to, always have to go to, like you go to rehab for one month, and then you go if you leave, it's to go to like in, in. Patient, like a mm, halfway impatient. house mm, mm. sort of thing, like where you live with other addicts for a while. Yeah, yep. they just let me go home. They're like, "No, you're doing great." Uh, and I think that that was me faking it to make make my way out of there, essentially. Right, right. Because the environment is not good for you to recover because you are housed with other addicts, right? Did you hear me, brother? Yeah, I don't, like, I think I honestly didn't necessarily need uh, rehab, but okay. I needed more some sort of... Uh, therapy. Yeah. Actual... Yeah, mental health help than Verbal therapy. Uh, yeah, Psycho psychological, verb, uh, verbal, cognitive, problem-solving yeah. therapy. You know what? That was what I was going to suggest to you. Yeah, that, that's what I, I ended up needing more. And I did get that there. I also got, like, I had a kidney issue that was discovered while I was in, in rehab as well. So that worked out really good. Wow, how much drug did you take over time, man? Well, like, they don't know exactly what the issue was. But uh, they discovered, like, I had high blood pressure just when they were doing the normal testing. And so they looked at my kidneys. I got a biopsy. And they said, like, your kidneys are 50% scar tissue. They didn't know why, what did that, it's but... It's because uh, of over-consuming of those drugs and yeah. alcohol, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I wasn't that big and a drinker. Like, I would healthy. drink, but not really into drinking too much. Okay, okay. The doctor said we think it was from ibuprofen. And I said, well, I certainly took pain pills and stuff like that, so maybe something Ibuprofen is not similar. even... Yeah. Okay, ibuprofen is uh, prescribed after surgery. Yeah, and not like a an opiate or anything like that. But they thought uh, it could be like, like I know they have like codeine and Tylenol combinations. I don't know if there is some sort of ibuprofen or like uh, their tests would show up as ibuprofen for what caused the damage. But I remember them saying, we don't know what caused it, but ibuprofen can cause a similar issue. Uh, in kidneys. Right. I think the issue was called focal segmental sclerosis. Okay, like the okay. Name of the actual uh, condition. Alright. Do you know why it's very important, right? To have your stomach pumped when you OD and being sent to the hospital. It's not just because to save you from the overdose, it's also to save your liver and your kidney because it's the last one yeah so oh wait we are at wave 55 wait i think so are we yeah. 55 yep. already this is the last one cool bro i'm gonna give you my opinion as a normie okay a normie who can relate? Feel free. Feel free. Yeah, who can relate to your story? Although we have quite difficult, about uh, quite different circumstances. I came straight out from yeah. a toxic family, man. <laughs> <laughs> who convinced me every fucking single day since I was a child, right? I'm not worthy of first-hand things or good things or even my own achievements, which yeah, has absolutely nothing same, to huh? do with them. By the way, I supported myself since I was 14. You know. 
since I was fourteen. We have some similar feelings, like we feel uh, similarly about some things, but like you said, very different upbringings and, and personalities, and different in a lot of other ways. But in a way, is it, if you look at it in a bigger picture, it is similar. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. The, until today, my I, it's because of my immediate family. The root cause of my uh, sense of not worthy, unworthiness, you know, not uh, not feeling worthy enough for good people in my life, for good things in my life, right? It all rooted from their voice, the actual verbat verbatim discouraging voices. Yeah, I'm a piece of shit. Uh, can your achievement be eaten? I'm, I should have killed you when you're a fucking baby. That's so fucked up. Welcome to my life. It's, it's, it just happened last Monday still, yeah? I am now 30. I'm coming 38 years old in uh, one month and 10 days. Anyway, it, although our root cause circumstances is different, was different, but I'm telling you straight up, it both resulted in the same feeling of unworthiness and um, a feeling of unworthiness and uh, that resulted us to uh, seek love whenever we can or find a high whenever we can the quick fixes you know I remember like when going to therapists and stuff we would talk about all the different things that like uh, upset you or make you feel bad but everything for me eventually boiled back down to yeah feeling like a failure feeling uh not worthy not not uh yeah that feeling there's okay. anxiety there's stuff but everything would boil back down to that okay okay imagine this scenario okay i just want to see how it goes is it okay okay let me try yeah, to fine. let Go me try to, let me try to role play it hold on I don't know how I don't know what your mom sounds like, but okay. Uh, let me pretend I'm your dad, okay? Son, son, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. My lovely dear son, I just wanna let you know something. Um, okay, let me try to do an American accent. Hold on. <clears throat> uh, my accent is too uh, Asian, yeah. Not realistic enough. Uh, son, my lovely, lovely son. You know, daddy will love you no matter what. I know you can't take me seriously right now because I'm trying to be funny. No. But try, okay? <laughs> try. Try to imagine I'm your father. Gamer, I am your father. Okay, I'm your father, huh? Gamer, listen up, son. Son? Son? Respond! Yes, Dad! <laughs> Son, I just want to tell you, okay? No matter what you do in this life, I just want you to be happy. That's all I ask for. You have made me proud by quitting your last job. Do you know that? And I will always be proud of you no matter what. How do you feel right now? Uh, I appreciate it. That's nice. No, I'm, that's really how you feel if I'm your dad and telling you all these things. Yeah, I think you're, you're just trying to respond because you were taught to respond like this. Like, okay, if let's say someone were to do something nice for you, it's like you saying thank you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but no. deep down inside, I'm asking you right now. Okay, let me go back to my normal voice. Life has been I'm, uh, I'm running to the exit right now too. Copy, copy. Yeah, let's go, man. Hold out as long go, go, go. A GG one hour, man. Did it. Yes, we fucking did it, bros. Yeah, hey, I'm sorry. I never, in I never upgrade my relics. If not, we could have gotten more goals. Yeah. Okay. I should we have upgraded. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. Did you put in your bolted, bolted relics? Ah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think you put Possibly. in bolted relics. You know, yeah. We're getting like stuff that has been <laughs> it's been bothered at the moment. 
GG! Okay, let's go evac first. Okay, now between me and you, right? Yeah, I am now Nero is delicious, yeah? Your sister from another mister. Gamer, yes. you with me, right? Okay, how I'm do you... Okay, nice. How do you truly fail if your father tell you this again all of a sudden? Like, uh... Deep down! I, I, don't I lie to I me! I believe that they believe it, but I don't believe that it's true. That's how I feel. Like, uh, that's deep down what, what, uh, my brain ends up telling me. Fuck, man. Okay. You know what? The least I can tell you today as a friend, right? Fellow Warframe gamer friend. Is you need to find the root cause of your this negative voice. All contributing factors that makes you still feel bad. Regardless about the fact. I mean, regardless, I mean, uh, uh, despite the fact that your parents loved you unconditionally, you Holy need to. Holy fuck, I got 10 ribbon slivers. Sorry, I'm sorry. I have four, bro. You got 10? I do have a booster, but yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my booster finished already. I have four, yeah. I'm pretty happy with our loots, though. That's amazing. Axis, by yeah, the definitely. way. Okay, now. Yeah, I agree. Like, uh, figuring out that route is definitely important. And I, I do my best to, like, uh, quiet down and, and uh, tell myself, no, 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 that is negative talk. That is not true. Mm. But, like, when you're in the, like, let's say you're in having a bad day. Mm. Uh, in the moment, at that time, you can say those words out loud. But actually believing that yourself, like, mm. believing, uh, it, that's tough for me still. Definitely. Not all the time. Uh, I think I'm able to work through it a lot, but that is definitely something that I still have to work with. Uh, like you're saying, getting rid of that negative voice, it's tough every single day to always quiet it down or shut it up uh, and truly believe it. But definitely uh, sometimes, oh yeah, it's tough sometimes, but uh, yeah, working yeah. on it, working on it. Finding out uh, where that actually comes from is certainly something I got to do. Uh, that's been something I've had trouble with. Well, for what's worth, right? Let's turn that one significant moment you had with your father, right? Into a positive event, okay? Whenever you think about your that tra semi-traumatic event your father did to you, pushing you to the corner, saying, do you believe in God? Understand two things. First and foremost, I believe he felt helpless. He didn't know how to help you. He wasn't, although he was academically smart, but he wasn't street smart. He wasn't yeah, that's street for smart. Sure. Yeah, yeah. He he I have never that. and you told me yourself, he was a triple degree student. Upper middle class. Everything handed to him over a silver spoon, right? Around that around there? Um, so kind of, but okay. like mm -hmm. he uh, is a farm boy, like grew up on the farm. Uh, oh, yeah. Wow, and he made it three freaking degrees. I'm so so impressive. Okay, okay, that could be a contributing factor as well. Without him living in a modern city, right? What the fuck does he know about being street smart? He is only like no, maybe he's absolutely zero street smarts whatsoever. Yeah. Be okay, who are the people will be deemed as street smart in my books? Okay. Uh you, I'm not sure if everybody will agree or not, but my opinion is a smart person a street smart person is someone who have been um seen many different types of people, interact with many different different types of people been through shit with many different types of people before and um so there's a social aspect to it for sure yeah that's street smart so given your father's history living in a farm growing up as a kid in a farm i doubt he have much experience dealing with like other people 
in general? Because there's many types of American in the country itself, right? If you only live in a farm and then move to where you are living right now, I'm going to assume he still haven't met all types of people before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Is exactly. his friend mostly the same ethnicity and same religion? Yep, yeah. Like, he is. he does not have an ounce of hate in him, and he is very happy to learn, but just does not have much experience. To put it in summary context, right? A street smart person is someone who has been through shits in life. And these shits are often caused by another human being. I would actually define it as being street smart and not um, being uh, too naive again, you know, like not, 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 not so naive, but more like uh, not so oblivious about the fact that people can be bad. Yeah, there's like a understanding the world around you sort yeah. of aspect to it. Yes, and not just living in your small little bubble that life is great, you know? So, okay, anyway, coming back to your dad. With this uh, understanding that he is living in a nice life, in, in, I'm, I'm not judging him. I, in fact, I envy his life. But the downside is he couldn't help you because he wasn't street smart. He has never been an addict. He has never been bad. He has never been like what pressurized. You know what I'm saying? He he have never been in your circumstances before. So I want you to trans I would love to encourage you, right, to transform that moment when he literally pushed you to the corner and yelled at you. When you were 18, is it? To Do you believe in God? You, you transform that into a loving situation because at that point when he do, did that, right, he was literally crying inside. And he's angry at himself and he has shit out on you for not knowing how to help you, you know? Yeah, I definitely understand you there. He did, he did not have any way he could relate to that situation that I was in and that's just how his emotions came out yeah your father is a good father oh yeah yeah, yeah. no I, I it's certainly something that like I can understand why he'd react that way and it's not like uh okay. I, I cert like it didn't uh ruin our relationship but it's just something that like I will always remember for sure it's something that affected it I wish my parents are 1% like yours, man. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, uh, I'm out of context. Okay, I, I just hope that uh, uh, this event can turn positive and keep remembering that uh, their love for you is truly unconditional. If you want to talk to them, I do not believe that it's impossible for you to reach out and just sit down and have a talk and let them know what you're thinking on the inside, right? I'll be honest with you, I uh, did that with my dad, I think last week at some point. Yeah, I chat with him all the time. That's awesome. What kind of things do you chat about? A lot of just like normal life stuff, but like day-to-day -day crap that we have going on, family stuff. Um, How about but... your internal stuff, like uh, emotions? Yeah, so we did that last week. I quit my job like we've been talking about. And so just tr like I've been doing soul searching kind of stuff, trying to figure out what the next step is. And so, yeah, talking about life and uh, hopes and dreams and stuff like okay. that. So, yeah, yeah, me and my dad have been doing that recently. Mm. My next question is, whenever you feel bad, right, do you tie yourself back to the days when you went to rehab and taking drugs? or doing bad things in your de definition of bad things? Not really now, no. Like mm. right now, I my main issue is like, God, I don't even know. Like, I guess Regret. it was getting mad. I would get so mad at work. That was 
truthfully my main issue. Um, and the other stuff was just kind of background. But we'll see what uh, is next. Hopefully just good things. Oh, damn it. I, I, besides, um, your, 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 your story is really interesting, you know. It's really fucking unique. You, you might deem it as, ah, just another American boy story, right? But to me, it's not. In fact, if you can figure this out, right? Check this out. You can share your recovery story with other conventional American boys who've been in the same shoes as you. If it's an ongoing, unspoken problem, right? You can share it. How you overcome your this uh, negative feelings of unworthiness for love, you know? So that, so that could also be part, part of my of issue. issue. Like, like uh, I, I have, have no... no like a sense of wanting to share that and it's not even like i want to be private or anything i it feels more like it is that I'm right lazy and selfish <laughs> like i don't give a damn about other people in that way sometimes i feel like maybe right now you don't feel that way lah. i mean in the future if you ever felt like yeah yeah if you felt like doing it I can guarantee you, you'll feel damn good, man. <laughs> yeah, I think um, that's why, like, I don't ever uh, mind talking about it. Yeah. But, yeah. Just lazy uh, as hell. Guess what? I'm... Everybody is lazy. Let's all get real here. <laughs> we are all lazy motherfuckers in general, okay? We only... It is not a selfish thing or lazy at all, right? To want to be lazy and do nothing because it's, if it's really our desire and not hurting anybody else by doing nothing, what's wrong? Yeah, see, that's, see, that's that, uh, that uh, negative inner monologue because if I really think about it, like at my work, I would say I was always either the most or maybe the second most busy actually doing important stuff person. See? My gosh. But in my personal life, I want to be a lazy ass. But of course, I look at it super negatively, like I'm just a piece of shit lazy person. Uh, but yeah, my inner monologue immediately goes to, oh, you're a lazy piece of shit. <sighs> Damn, he hits me right in the gut, man. <laughs> I better with that uh, every day as well. This negative voice in my head that I'm not doing enough with my life and the more this inner monologue negative voice overcomes my thoughts, right? It completely disable me and I naturally go into this what you call the narcoleptic symptom. Narcoleptic means you it induces the sleepy sleep chemical in my brain and I sleep. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, I also am a hardworking worker when I'm working for someone else. I always do my best even out of the job scope. I do more, you know. Then, uh... But self... No. Sorry? Yeah. But when it comes to yourself? Yeah, I still feel shit about myself. I still do. Even right now, as I'm talking to you, because I can relate, I will talk to my own therapist about this. Although, you know what's funny about my case? I already knew the roots of it. But somehow my brain, right, is so programmed and tuned, attuned to this self-loading thought, you know. So I I figured uh, part of my healing progress, right, is I really really need to meditate and surround my surround myself with more people like your, yourself. 
Because to me, honestly, you believe it or not, brother, you are a positive influence in my life because you are someone who has been through almost the same shit, although different story, but same shit as me. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's good to talk. No, I I appreciate you more. Definitely, I appreciate you more. The wonderful thing about America here is this: there are many different sources that you are not making use of. You need to go to your AA meetings whenever you are depressed, whenever you feel like you know want to have another drink or something. You know, I know. Okay, maybe you, you might be thinking, ah. I'm not on sobriety, right? But a meeting doesn't mean that you have to be on sobriety. It can mean that you just go there and talk about your self loneliness You should definitely make use of those resources available in your state, right? And talk to other people. I assure you, 90% of the group of the people, right, can relate to your story. I appreciate that too. Yeah. yeah, I have. I like you said. I have done those before. Like I used to do the uh, NA and AA. Do you feel better? Do, yeah. But um, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it just wasn't wasn't for me. Like I think I ended up not really needing like having issues quitting drugs, but uh, no, and don't or go... just mental health issues, mm. I guess. And like you're saying, uh, finding a good outlet for that okay. that's definitely important. Thanks. I've, I've had uh, great outlets for talking about mental health and stuff. Yeah. Um, it's just been actually internalizing that that's been tough for me. I appreciate that, definitely. You, you need to go through the 12 step properly this time, if you have a chance, okay? Because without going through the 12 steps, right? Okay. You know, in Singapore, it's a real stigma, right? If you are a addict, you be seen as an addict always. Even though you are, you have become a useful, productive human being, right? You always be always be seen and tended that. Oh, once upon a time, you are a felon. You were a felony. You are a felon. You are a, a convict. The stigma here in Singapore is really like sh- like 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 the smell of shit, right? On shit. Does the the the, the stank naughty, naughty. stank on shit? Yeah, is that bad? The stigma here, but in your country, I believe it's different. So make yeah, use very... of that, and um, believe in the your reality that America is more of a free country where this sort of things is not stigmatized. Sadly, so, though, sometimes it's a little too free. As you know too well, we have Amber Heard's just running around everywhere. <laughs> I know. I mean, don't care about Amber Heard, you know? Yeah, but, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just yeah, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. Are you saying there's too many, sorry to say this out loud, yeah, entitled Americans? Oh, God, yeah. Same here in Singapore. I'm probably this country, entitled, right? Uh, a lot of times too. I'll tell you something about my country. Our country is so entitled to the point, right? <laughs> How do I describe a situation? Hold on. Good things happening to them on a daily basis, like for example, our healthcare system our housing system, yeah, to the entitled people, right? They felt that it's a, oh, it's a born privilege. I shouldn't be grateful about it. And then they will never be grateful about it. And that's why a lot of people become empty, depressive, because they don't know, they forgot how to appreciate and then worse than that is they are so entitled to the point right they expect everything handed over to them without them working shit you know a lot of singaporeans feel that way yeah that bugs me 
people want something for nothing. That always bugs me. In a way, one way or another, although countries are different, can relate, right? Don't 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 focus on these people. You know, focus on. I'm sorry if I seem like a neck, yeah. No, it's all good. It's all yeah, good. I apologize. Uh, in, just just remember something. Although I'm nagging at you, I may not I may not walk the talk. <laughs> I am still reminding myself every single day about all these facts myself. You know. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. We're all still growing. All still learning. Yeah. Um. Are you still living with your? parents by any chance no no i i'm trying to remember when i moved out like it was later because so i went to rehab like uh right at the last year of my four-year degree like okay. the last semester uh i left school i'm pretty sure like i would have flunked out of classes uh but i left and went to rehab and then I finished, I, so I just had a little bit left of school. And mm -hmm. I, when I came out of rehab, instead of going into some like, uh, like an attic house, okay. uh, I just went home and had to go to like outpatient. So like in the morning, I would go to a outpatient rehab with other like group people okay. and then could just go home. But during that time, I started finishing up class in school. Are you uh, saying you already moved out that time? I'm just trying to remember, like, I think, like, at 24. So after I, I got out of rehab, I had to do this outpatient thing. And during that time, I lived at home and finished school. And then I I moved out sometime after that. So I think I was probably 24. So, like, 10 or 11 years ago, I moved out of uh, my parents' house. You know, I think you should... I think. You should move back home for a bit and reconnect with your parents a bit. You need to witness it firsthand for yourself, right? The unconditional love and the real love connection. Physically. I do not think that your current state of this negative voice in your head, right? Is good for you to live on your own. Because what you're lacking of right now is the physical evidence that your parents are loving you unconditionally and no matter what, what they want from you, right? which is a fact, which you're already hearing from them, which I already re -enact. Okay, son. Son. <laughs> I just want you to be happy. Even you yourself admitted, admitted to me that deep down you don't believe it. You, you don't feel worthy of it. You need to go home and uh, experience, re rekindle this... Um, Be a child again. You know what I'm saying? You need. So okay. I uh, I do hang out with my family, uh, in my opinion, too often. But I see them and hang out with them all the time, actually. And uh, oh, really? I, like I think uh, what I don't do though is I don't hang out with friends anymore. I have ditched all of my friends. But that's not a I bad thing at all. All the time. I think I need that sort of socialization though. Like I think I I uh, I hear what you're saying, and okay. I'm getting that sort of. Uh, no, I'm not asking you to go. Parents. I'm not asking you to go make more friends. You know, to be more yeah, specific. Try to like uh, feel that actual unconditional love from them is what you're saying, right? You need to address your uh. You need to let your inner child feel the love again, man. Because I do not think that your inner child was fed enough or understood that the love you've given to you was truly unconditional. And then uh, your parents truly want you to be happy and see how it goes from there. I, I, I don't know how to do that, I'll be honest. Like I feel like I do know that, that my parents love me and... I feel like I know that, but just don't always, I don't know how to explain it, I guess. Like, uh, it's me, it's not them. I, yeah, it's the best way I can explain it. Okay. I feel like they do a good job at showing me, they've always been there for me, uh, always give me help if I need it. But yeah, just kind of. You're making me MV, though. MV man. <laughs> 
You know, yeah, I, I, the truth I, is, I, I would say I got really, really lucky with my family. So many of my friends hate their family or hate their parents or had a bad experience, and that's just not me. I had a yeah, that's great me. Family uh, that would be me. You just described me. I don't hate <laughs> my parents. In fact, I'm trying to. I'm still in the process. I'm trying to un unlove my parents. Because each day, as I still love them unconditionally, right, it hurts me even more. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, that's understandable, definitely. Uh, given my circumstances, right? Yeah, Fucking yeah. Fucking cruel, toxic parents. Um, imagine, I don't know whether will this make you feel any better. Imagine you want to kill yourself every fucking single day because of your parents. Your parents yeah, were truly terrible. evil abuse you and makes you feel unsafe all the time and blame everything bad happened to you right on you even though it wasn't your fault how can it be, be your fault when you're 12 years old <laughs> so use that i hope my story is impactful enough so that you will, this story of mine can uh, help you overcome your negative voice somehow. This negative voice in my head is real, man. It's not even a makeup perspective. My, this negative voice in my head is real. It's induced by my immediate, supposedly guardian and loved ones. Didn't just make itself up or come from a from random it's been been yelled at you for a long time do you know what is the one thing i have to make up on my own hmm. neuro is delicious my outer ego ah. i feel good on live stream because i know for a fact that somehow when i take my work seriously like having a proper stream layout proper webcam, proper microphone, sound sounds perfect. It makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel good to be neuros delicious. But once the face cam and microphone is off, I'm back to the abuse child. That's my reality. Not good, definitely. I already know what to do with mine. So how about yours? Your, your situation is pretty safe to say opposite as mine yeah. so there's some similarities and some exact opposites as yeah well. i can i do wonder at this point like how much recreational drug you consume before though that could be also a major contributing factor of your depressive and self-loading uh mood yeah, oh, and even yeah. just like the like, I seem to have like uh, little control over emotions, or I'll get like odd emotions for odd situations. You know what I mean? Like what where someone would normally maybe maybe want to laugh here, I might want to cry or something like that. Like I'll have strange reactions I find sometimes to what. Okay. Uh, and so I do think like you're saying, yeah, okay. some of that stronger emotional reaction uh could be caused from just uh complete no emotions or using drugs to cover emotions for many years brother do you know what i can classify you right now and what is oh my gosh oh my gosh i'm a genius do you know that there is uh, four phases of ptsd and the last okay five I'll be Fright. honest, I don't know much Freeze. about PTSD. Okay, so basically, there's uh, different stages of... Uh, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, the, 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 the process of tra uh, experiencing trauma. And usually trauma comes, means psychological, right? It's often related to something that is traumatic, not to the... Okay, traumatic, this word in modern days are often used in relations to psychological effect. So the process of traumatic experiences usually comes in different phases. Uh, the fight, the initial impact, 
the initial experience of the traumatic incident and then comes a uh, fight fight and then comes a uh, freeze wait fight 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 freeze there's also flight and then lastly there's spawn sorry there's five different phases it is that deep you can actually research it on your own guys it's on google man it's on google so it seems to me somehow you are fawning brother f-a-w-n why are you trying to live a life trying to play someone else i'm yeah, asking you i'm asking I don't you right know now why that i don't know exactly but that's, that's certainly true. something like i always i'm not uh I'm trying to uh, put put others first and certainly never work on my own Brother, issues. now you know the truth. I'm telling you straight up, stop, stop phoning. Because I can tell you right now, no one, not say no one, yeah? When you are phoning, right? And when we are not talking about this and no one else is listening to this broadcast ever or right now or ever, they don't give a fuck about us at all. And that's the truth. Everybody is just minding out their own goddamn fucking business. Do I have a booger in my nose? Is my makeup okay today? How do I look today? Or am I like, do I, do I smell bad today? Do I, you know, present myself properly, you know? Everybody is busy with their own fucking problems. Or their own inter internal positive or negative dialogue. Think about it. I think to a level too, like, uh, like there's levels to it. Like caring about the people around you is fine, but caring about uh, what others and helping others around you to, when it's a detriment to yourself uh, is dumb. Yeah. And like I think I've done that quite a bit. Uh, like I used to have roommates at my place uh, after moving out. I used to have two guys. One guy paid basically no rent, and the other guy lived here free for like years. And I just Why? didn't care. Like, it just because it's like, oh, they're my friend. <laughs> You're and, such a nice uh, guy, you know? They trashed the place and all that, but, like, I just did what not the care. I'm, oh, my gosh. You, you should and make so, them like, do the doing, housework same with as my a job payment too. of rental. Like, you see, it's the I... same with my job where I stayed there for a really long time doing dumb stuff. I should have quit a long time ago, but just, like, didn't care to uh, take care of myself better. And so I'm working on that, obviously. I, I've kicked them out. I've now quit that job. So I'm, I'm trying to do better, but it's a battle. It's a continuing struggle. Does, do you have an inner dialogue telling you that you should be kind so that you receive kindness in return? I think the, the, the inner dialogue is uh, that I don't deserve kindness. So you, you overdo it by compensating? Overcompensate it yeah, by giving like your I friend. Yeah, I need to do this so that I could even uh, deserve it. I must uh, do something equal to uh, for you know what I mean. Like yeah. uh, if I don't do, then I certainly don't deserve it. That is definitely a form of self sabotage, yeah. Because when you do something kind to someone else, it should not. There shouldn't be any form of return or expectation of any return. You do something nice for someone else, you feel good. That's a return immediately. But if you do yeah, something I, I think nice, deep down it is a self-serving thing, like uh, doing that kind of stuff, like you're saying. Yeah, I do it. It is a selfish thing, even though it, it may no, outwardly no, no. not look like that. It is a self-serving sort of action. Okay, if you truly feel good by, let's say, you, letting your friend stay rent free at your place, you really do feel good about that. Okay, let that be the end of the story, right? But if it becomes yeah, yeah. Uh, inner dialogue telling you to be nice so that you receive kindness in return because you are trying to overcompensate it by because you, you feel like you don't deserve this kindness, right? So you need to overdo it in order to receive just a tad of kindness back. That is not self-serving anymore. That is not good for your mental health, your life anymore. The, uh, it's, it's it's strange it's always been like to uh like I, I wouldn't be like oh hey buddy come on live with me to try to be good friends with him or something it would always just be like people know sure, that you always of, be kind yeah. right yeah it's just something like this is i better with that of, of course i would let for the last let 10 years 
I would <laughs> never ask a friend to let me live there, but of course I would allow them to uh, live with me if they need it. I could never, never do the same, though. I could never ask them to give me the same. That would not be... Mm. Uh, Allow me to yeah. uh, track back a little bit to why I would like sure. you to really stop fawning. You need to at least start to feel what you truly feel and act out what you feel in, on the inside. Do not behave how people, what you think, what you think other people want you to behave. If you suddenly feel like, wow, holy shit, I feel like I feel so amped up right now, I'm angry, I need to go and I need to go head to the gym. Do it. Don't just live your life as of how you think other people want you to live. It doesn't make sense. It's not helping others, it's not helping yourself. So why live that way? I agree, I agree. That, that is Brother, something I yeah. have started to do. Yeah, I totally Act agree. Out, okay, as long as you're not hurting anybody, best is not yourself, yeah? Also not yourself. And sometimes you, you gotta, even do have to hurt some people. Don't, don't, of course, don't hurt yourself or other people, okay? Um, I guess like what I mean is sometimes that might mean you got to get rid of a friendship if it's not a good yeah thing. or you got to quit a job and ruin some relationships there which may not be the best but sometimes it is for the overall benefit yeah I understand under some circumstances you got to act professional even though you are angry on the inside like for example at a workplace uh, under a professional setting but guess what sometimes you can even not be professional man you can say you know what sir with all due respect fuck you that's professional you know what i mean yeah yeah because that's like your, that's your true feeling you see like uh friends i made doing drugs out of my life too so, so that was like not necessarily didn't feel good and i didn't want to like lose those relationships necessarily but if a relationship is not helping you to grow instead is making you feel worse and not able to express what you're truly feeling at that moment ditch these relationships man it, it, it uh, there's a reason why you choose to be isolated right and not have friends and a woman it's because you know you feel worse when you're surrounded by people because you have not overcome and leave and uh, walk, uh, walk your feelings Am I right? Is it accurate? Yeah, I think so. Guess what? Exact same reason why I choose to be by myself. Physically. Literally. Besides you guys, right? I'm always alone. Always. I, w I was by myself going through the disappointing, soul-crushing family trial. Having to sit through the trial, having to hear my father commit perjury in front of me, covering the abuse of my sister on me. Both of them, That's by the so way. That's so messed up. My father even covered up his own abuse against his own wife. And there's actual official police record. And do you know what else is messed up? I'll tell you something else, okay? That's, messed, that's truly messed up. The judge himself knows the truth. Abuse did took place. I was I was alone against four respondents, both my toxic biological parents, biological sisters. I was able to prove that they committed perjury during trial. Do you know that? I was able to uh, uh, with the guidance of the judge. Surprisingly, yeah, because he was giving me hints like you cannot ask question uh, like this, so. Okay, then I try to rephrase it uh, in some other way where I was able to expose them that the testimony written by both biological parents was not written by them. It was false. And it was struck off during the trial. Do you know that? The, the judge asked my biological father, are you willing to, for the court, are you, with your permission, would you give the court permission, right, to subpoena police uh, report? of uh, uh, evidence of abuse against your wife. My father said no. Duty as charge. Yeah. 
because uh, my father telling. claimed my father claimed that uh, oh our family is very healthy I'm the bad but I'm the I'm actually the bad guy that was their claim by the way when there's no record of me ever abusing or touching anybody in fact there's record of me returning fucking wallets to police station me doing charity streams for charity organizations me achieving good grades in school being top two in in singapore representing my country and serving the army these are the only records they can find in the system you're the bad guy huh they want to pay me as the bad guy because the ultimate goal of Diaz is to get me out of the house so that they can rent out this place and live a more comfortable life. That's sad. So anyway, I'm sorry I was a bit, you know, I am now walking my talk. I am sharing with you my story because I felt truly angry when I'm oh, sharing with you this that. story. Yeah, no, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Then, brother, you need to do the same, bro. You need to start. Don't get me wrong. It is perfectly civil and normal to like manage your anger. If, you're, if you feel like your anger is going to hurt yourself or hurt someone else, right? You got to manage it properly and yeah yeah i've been doing stupid stuff like uh, i've been getting angry and tr talking about it correctly and stuff but not like uh like breaking shit like i was breaking shit at my work before i quit and that's okay. not good that's not using uh, like breaking... that's not taking care of anger uh yeah there's always a healthy ways to channel your anger out so if i can't be healthy with my anger <laughs> There's, there will be healthy quit. ways to vent yeah. your anger. Like for example, coming on a live stream where you are familiar with the streamer, you can always vent your frustration about the circumstance, your circumstances to the streamer. I'm sure the streamer wouldn't take it personally. In no, fact, and you, uh, they I pretty, will listen. That's why I don't mind talking like this because like you've said too during this, just having a conversation like this already is pretty cathartic. It feels good to just... Good. talk openly about stuff like that yeah now we talk about it you feel good at the moment temporarily temporary because now not just me knows your story listeners in this live stream knows your story but what if you're now back alone again brother what if after my stream ended it. you gotta live it too you gotta start to practice walk your feelings man if you feel angry sad depressed you gotta okay if you ever feel depressed just watch a sad movie cry your heart out i'm gonna i, I watch your youtube videos to do that i actually do do that it's though. okay as long as you're not hurting anybody especially yourself it's completely fine i'm gonna yeah, let you guys in way to get some emotions out i'm gonna let you guys in on a deep dark secret of mine okay i always put on repeat a single movie and the only movie I keep in my two PC, yeah, it's called Black Snake Moon. Whenever I feel like, That's whenever my movie. negative voices, actual negative voices instilled by my toxic shit, fucked up, messed up, psychotic family, I always uh, turn to the movie because that movie speaks to me a lot. And I just let it out, man. I'll probably pop some pills and drink some whiskey to manage the suicidal emotions, which my social worker endorsed, by the way. My social worker actually endorsed this way of managing my suicidal thoughts. Because I can tell you, brother, every single time and every single day when I think about ending my life, I will ultimately succeed, man. So I have to manage it every fucking single day yep, off just stream keep chugging along just like a, a train just keep chugging it's like trying to quit crack while the pipe is still stuck needle still stuck in your brains yeah your situation is definitely unique in that way like you have to live you're still living with uh, exactly i need to get yeah. the fuck out of here but you know what i will not 
leave this place I rightfully earn, hard earn, white knuckle. This room, bedroom, right, is my safety zone. These motherfuckers in my life, right, who are supposed to be my family, is not going to take away from me. I will fight till the end, until my last breath, be if they can carry my dead body out of this bedroom, man. Let's just say that. Yeah, you will check out when you're ready to check out. I will check out when I have my fair share back. My fair share of contribution, that's it. I'm not even asking for more, you know. I'm not asking them to sell this house and give me one-fifth of my share. No. Just give me what I have contributed throughout my 37 years of life to this family. You must take note, yeah? I've been supporting Seems myself since I was 14 years old, you know? High school too, like, a, like your sophomore. 14, bro. I left, I was a high school dropped out. I started working in a freaking adult scene, nightclub, bar, serving alcoholic drinks to adults when I was 15. I got my first paycheck, $2,000, sing dollars, when I was 15. I started giving money to my parents when I can. If I don't spend it on drugs, of course. I do that, you know. I still love and care for them, despite all the shit they put me through. Anyway, thanks for letting me run. I'm not gonna... I hope... No, I'm always by... done. I appreciate it. It's, it's, it's enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share. I just hope that through my share, Believe, start to walk your talk, walk your feelings, bro. You need to start that. If not, you're going to fucking vo go volcanic for no reason. And you might actually hurt someone and worse yourself, you know. Yeah, I've, I've done started, that before. But I've, only, I've only taken a few baby steps. I got to keep working at it. You know what I mean? Just keep in mind the reality is as long as you walk your feelings and you walk your talk or whether you are doing it or not, no one is really giving it a rest as. It is for your own good only and yourself for yourself only. When no one is looking, the truth is not many people are that observant of someone else if you're not acting like a fool in public, you know. Everybody is just minding their own business, like, oh, am I, like, you know, uh, behaving like a weirdo? Am I blending in with everybody else? Everybody is always so conscious, cautious, con conscious, conscious about their presence and existence, you know, among other people. That's the truth. So, sharing you with this reality, you need to understand and accept the fact that no one is really giving a rest as whether you are living accordingly to what people what you think people want you to live or behave you just gotta live your own life and be happy bro do you man just do you if you feel like wanking wank i mean civilly of course you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah oh we're wanking baby we're wanking yeah like you know uh let it rain bitches oh let it move oh, psh, psh. Ooh la la, woo! Let it rain! Ah! Oh, oh yeah! Ah! Oh. I think... The one good thing... Honestly, I still... Uh, at this point, right? I must admit... I do find my situation better than yours, you know, brother. Yeah, it's kind of uh, which which uh, which do you like better? Which would you prefer? Sort of a deal. I think some people might choose mine. Some people might choose yours. Both have their good things and their bad. Holy shit, bro! I mean, I am way past the fawning phase, man. I cannot see myself living my life for someone else, or 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 for the sake of someone else who wants me to behave how they want me to behave. I'm fucking oh, past I'm, that. I'm over that, but Are I you haven't sure? figured out what. Yeah, yeah, but what I haven't figured out yet is what the hell I actually like. What what uh, Jason myself wants to live for. Okay. 
first and foremost, you need to you really, really need to identify objectively, yeah, uh, every any internalized unrealistic perception you may have formed in your head. And then you need to address it individually, right? Each 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 negative voice with your therapist. Because honestly, I am not trained for that. I can only share and relate to you, but this, this is just temporary, bro. You need actual um, professional. There is this, even in Singapore, a conservative country, right? There is this um, therapy called... Ah, man, I need to ask my therapist the name again. I might actually go for it. There's this, okay, basically this therapy, what it does is it gives you actual strategy on how to cope with silencing your inner critic and living, living your life. Living, walk, walk your talk and walk your feelings by uh, uh, managing it properly, you know? If your, let's say your anger is too much, too much inside, store up inside, there are ways to properly channel it out. I don't have to tell you what, right? You can jerk it. You can jerk your dick until, uh, be angry at your dick, you know? Like, uh, fuck you. Uh, like angry masturbation. That works, right? I, Just I, I, I'm gonna have to figure out something. Yeah, like I've, I've been able to figure out um, how to move past things like anxiety and work through that. But working through anger just has not been something I've been able to figure out. Yeah. Although also it's like I haven't had that issue in previous years, but more recently that mm. has become an issue. So I got to figure that out. Yeah. I, I, you asked me previous, uh, just moments ago, you asked me this question, what I prefer to be in your situation or, your situation or mine, right? Sure, yeah. I would say I would rather stay in mine. Why? Because my issue is really real and it's in front of me and it gives me the right to be angry. I'm not going to pretend. Oh, I get you. Yeah, yeah I'm not. Oh, yeah, that makes I, sense. The only time where I feel like I have to so called pretend, right, is I have to manage my anger my actual sadness, that I experience it 24 fucking 7 like a fucking hawk, man. The Avengers, the hawk, the, uh, what is the name again? Mark Ruffalo, the hawk, Avengers. Hurrah! Oh, yeah, I'm I like know. him, you know? I'm always yeah. feeling depressed. I'm always feeling angry. I'm like a fucking hawk, mini hawk on the inside. That's my, I would say that's my biggest obstacle. But at the same time, I feel more lucky in a way that I'm not living my life according to someone else or how they want me to live. And I'm not going to behave how people want me to behave. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, definitely. Like, uh, my issue in, in relation to the Hulk is like, I, uh, someone would do something dumb a simple mistake that you should just forgive and move past like they would forget to do something at work okay you know what but, i mean uh, something like it's a mistake you can get over it and move past it. any normal person should okay but like i just find i can't get over it i'll be mad and it might be two or three days i will show you right like the... angry about that yeah your, your root of this anger has absolutely nothing to do with your colleague colleague's mistake Exactly. Yeah, it's like, and I can, I can look at myself and say it definitely has nothing to do with them. But I'm still mad right now, and I can't it, yeah. not be mad. I the, can't get unmad right now. You need to acknowledge where your the root of your anger stem from, and you need to let it out, bro. Okay, now the flaw is yours. Tell me one thing you are most angry about, and you need to express it verbally. Like with anger, man. Let's hear it. Let's go. I honestly don't know. Like currently, I don't know. Because currently, you're talking to somebody lovable, right? You feel loved. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Aww, I do love you, brother. Yeah, Come no, on. it's like I was. I get. I'm not mad right now, and so like, uh, 
but when I do get mad, it could be about something just stupid, like something that's inane, doesn't even matter. It's just tough for me to get out of that, even when it's like I know that that's stupid. I know that it's something I shouldn't be mad about. I get stuck in that kind of grind. Okay. I applaud you, right? That you're able to manage your anger, despite the fact that you knew because because the fact that you knew that your anger has nothing to do with that person. Your anger yeah, I actually. I can recognize that yeah. it's I shouldn't be mad, or I can recognize that I'm angry about something small that I shouldn't be. But just like that, uh, I applaud you. that anger down is the problem. You have to deal with. You have to deal with your this anger inside you. You need to channel it out and find out what it is, man. Yeah, find a healthy way to express it. I need yeah. to get uh, the, an exercise or something. Exactly. Or... The difference between me and you right now is I know what I'm angry and depressed about. I know what I'm suicidal about. That's why I'm trying to find ways to overcome the feelings of anger, depressed, and uh, always sad. My hawk, my suicidal hawk. Well, I think Which you're right. The there is something deeper that I need to face, but I just don't can't. I don't quite know what that is yet. I guess you have to know. figure it out with a professional. Yeah. That I can't There's help you because I really, problem. I literally don't have the skill, brother. I literally yeah, I don't know am why not. I am that angry, but I, I have, and I can tell I shouldn't be that angry. Yeah. <laughs> Promise me you will make an effort to research on a good therapist that is uh, specialized in um, unknown anger and how to manage it, find the root cause of it. You know, someone is expert in this field. Yeah, it's something I'm definitely working on. It's something I'm working on. Believe me, you and I and everybody in the chat, yeah, who's listening to this, we need to put in the effort to trial and error therapies. It's like trial and error girlfriend, boyfriends, man. I'm not fucking kidding. <laughs> it is well, a, like you it's said gonna too, be, mm. uh, like I have good family. That's awesome. They're supportive, mm. but they can't do everything. Like especially they don't with know mental how. health stuff, you can't, uh, they can only do so much. You got to work through some of it yourself. Even your sister, do it. yeah. Even your sister who can somewhat relate to your story, I must say your story is unique because I have never been through your shoes, brother. Or another way is you can talk to someone senior than you who you think may have gone through the same shoes as as you. That that could be another way. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Best yet, right? Do you know in my books what makes a good therapist? Someone who has been through hardships and shits in their own life as well. So look for a therapist like this, if possible. And I hope this therapy has a good heart like yourself, you know? I always believe that uh, people who became who goes into a profession and want to help someone else, right? It's because they don't want someone else to go through the same shits as they, they, they went through. It's the same reason why I'm passionate about speaking with you at the moment. If we are staying objective about why, we, you, why I invited you into this Discord chat in the first place. Sure, sure. So, yeah, look for a... I'm not sure. I, I hope you don't bump into a actual evil bad guy. Yeah? Uh, being too shit in life <laughs> and you want to ruin somebody yeah. else's life in return. Okay. Uh, research. Look for reviews, credibility, you know. Uh, yeah. Read up on these uh, therapies. You know, trial and error. Honestly, do you know how many therapies I've been through before I settled on my current one? Although he... How many? Five, and honestly, five is a hard number, okay? It is always a disappointment, right? To go through each, imagine you just, all I needed was just one fucked up therapist telling me, you got no problem, Neuro, you're fine. 
You can go home now, yeah. What the fuck? Thanks for all the great help, buddy. I don't even know what I was uh, going through, you know. I haven't come into realization that uh, how my family treat me was bad. Do you know that? And I was suicidal, depressed, angry, everything. And I was lost, like completely not sure who I was and, and, and why I'm feeling this way and that, you know? Like, maybe like you right now. And then the doctor tell me, say, you got no problem. You can go home now. What the f I need help. That's why I'm here, man. I booked the appointment two months ago, okay? So when I say the number five, it's really a hard, not a small number. I was really lucky to have bumped in, to have uh, found this uh, uh, psychiatrist, acting psychologist because he somehow have seen a lot of bad things, witnessed a lot of bad things. He has treated many different abuse people. Do you like your current one now? Yeah, I love him. He's like my family, you know? Although yeah, we are I not had, close. I think one good therapist and the others I didn't like, but I did have one good one. That's, yeah, you know. Um, and exactly like you said, it was someone who was an addict in the past, has gone through similar situations. Uh, yeah. yeah, just like you're saying. Well, see, or she able to understand do you think it's effective so far, the therapy session? Yeah, yeah, I was seeing that therapist. I'm trying to remember when exactly. Okay. Uh, years ago, but um, definitely was a helpful person. Yeah. He will, or she is going to be a good place to start. Go back again. But this time, you really must have the intention to want to figure it out why you're feeling all these negative feelings on the inside. Be yeah, very I think she could have helped me then too. I think like I'm I'm going through different issues now than I mm. was then, uh, and I yeah, it could be a good idea to go back and check. Yeah, uh, check I'm in. not sure what she yeah. actually specialized in because different therapies will have different set of uh thera 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 psychotherapy. They uses different psycho psycho psychotherapy methods. There's many yeah. different kinds, by the way. There is like what cognitive. Blah, 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 she CBT. was uh, specifically like a drug dependency, an alcohol oh, dependency therapist. Right. Okay. But I'm sure like uh, uh, that she could help mm. me with some. Still, I would I would think maybe not, but I would. That's think she awesome. Could still help. You know what? I have faith. Okay, you'd let her know the issues you're struggling with, and you don't know where it rooted from. And if she doesn't have the skill and don't know what to do, right? Have faith and ask her yourself. Take the initiative. Is there any other? Uh, if she by by chance, if she doesn't have the skill set or therapy therapy skill set to help you with the issue besides addiction, right? Ask her to refer you to another colleague of hers who might be an expert in resolving what you're looking oh, for. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I'm yeah. Sure. My my current doc, my my current therapy did the same. He's not an expert in uh, problem solving, handling in real life uh, struggles, silencing inner critics, inner voices. He's not an expert in this. He's an expert in uh, the CBT. People who What's are diagnosed. Uh, okay. Uh, Cognitive behavioral behave behavioral therapy. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's what CBT means. Uh, CBT is often is often according to Google, yeah, uh, is often so called uh, administered on people with borderline personality. But my issue is no longer my borderline personality because. I don't have this outburst of uh, 
self-destructive behavior, you know what I'm saying? I may have suicidal thoughts and all that, but CBT is not what I'm looking for. I am looking for something else to cope with my actual in real life situation that's yeah, still yeah. ongoing until today. 